Hey ho everyone, Ginger Gargoyle here. Yes, I have two hands. I got you up on my box for my scan and cut. I want to go over a couple of things really quick. Um, and it's about paper. Now, I have three different types of black paper. Alright, both of these are 80 pound papers. This one is a whirlwind. And it is... 80 pound black cardstock. Actually, they call it cover stock. All right, I like the whirlwind. It's smooth, okay, on both sides. All right, and then let me get my get my chalk pencil out. Good chalk pencil, so I don't get these mixed up. All right, so this is whirlwind. Okay, and I just wrote on the on the thing a W and a W for Whirlwind. All right, my understanding is Whirlwind is no longer in business. Now, if I am wrong, please somebody let me know so that I can stop saying it because I don't want to hurt their business if they are still in business. But my understanding is they are no longer there. My other one is from Scrapbooking Made Simple. All right, and this... I want to say it was $6 for 25 sheets, and it's 80 pounds. Okay, and I will mark this SMS. Okay, and then this last one, okay, is the heavyweight paper that I picked up over at Hobby Lobby. Now, it's heavyweight. I cannot find anything that tells me what poundage it is. But you can see that it's $9. Okay, but I get 50 sheets, which I like. No, I take that back. I want to say the SMS one was $7, 7 or 8 Because I remember thinking, wow, this the, the one from Hobby Lobby was so much cheaper than either one. This feels like a heavier paper. This almost feels like a hundred pound paper, guys. It's very smooth. Okay. H L. All right, that's from Hobby Lobby. Now, let's see. Um, they all feel very much the same. All right, as far as color goes. Now, this my light has. A very yellow tinge to it. They are fluorescent lights. So you can see that the the colors are fairly similar. Um, I can tell the whirlwind is a little bit more black where the, the Hobby Lobby might be a little more grayish but then that could just be because of the way that they're stacked. Mm, no, I would say they're all very much the same. Okay, so I'm going to sacrifice the first inch of each one. Okay, so I don't know if you can see this or not. I'm hoping you guys can see this. All right, this is my Cricut mat. I'm going to cut the Hobby Lobby one first at one inch. Okay, but there's a reason that I'm doing this. I gotta remark this one again. So I put them back in the right packages when I get done. All right. All right, and this is the whirlwind. And I will cut this at one inch as well. this again. Whirlwind at one inch as well. Now I use my bar a lot to hold on to guys because it helps keep the paper from shifting. Um, 
if you don't know about your bars on your cutters. That's what their primary purpose is, is to keep it from shifting around. Okay, it holds your paper so you don't have to have your fingers in the way. And what I do is I press it up against the guides up here. Okay, you got guides here and you got a guide on the other side. And I make sure it runs in that track. And then you can see that my finger, actually I don't know if you can see, my finger gets caught underneath. Alright, that's why I'm holding it here so I can take out that finger. And I know that my paper has not shifted. And then I push up. Alright. Now, the reason I cut these three strips is because they're only an inch wide. So if they're going to fall and flubber, they're going to do it this way. Okay, so I have to hold them so that they're all fairly even. And now we'll see which has the most wriggle or the less wriggle. Okay. This one looks pretty straight. And this is the one from SMS. This is 80 pound. Okay. And I mix them back up again. And then we'll give them another friggle. And it still seems to be the one that stands up the straightest. All right. Um, it really does, guys. It really stands up straight. So, I would say that that's probably got the better grain of all of them. But, they all feel very much the same. Maybe at the one, maybe at the one inch mark, this one does feel a little heavier. Now she just came out with some hundred pound that I'm waiting for it to come. So, but yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a quick rundown on these and to tell you that it take it really pays off to pay attention to um, what your paper is like. All right. And this is not the only consideration. You also have to pay attention to how it works in your printer. Um, I have a laser printer here at home, and I have an inkjet printer up at the cabin. The laser printer on black, and I do not believe I have any available to show you, the laser printer does leave a shiny mark on the smooth paper, okay? And it's easy, well, it's not easy to see, but it's, you, you can see it so you can cut it. You can cut a nice straight line. I found on my craft paper, let's see, I don't even think I have any of that around. On my craft paper, when I was working on my books, I had used a really smooth paper up at the cabin with my inkjet printer. And the ink sat on it really well. No problems at all. Well, during the summer, I was leaving my paper up at the cabin and coming back to the house. And um, or when I came back in the house in the, sp in the fall when my daughter started school, and I discovered that I had forgotten my paper, or I didn't bring my paper back with me. So I had picked up a new, new thing of paper. Here it is. And this is the paper I picked up at Hobby Lobby. All right. And it also comes in a 50 pack. Let me get this down. Okay. It comes in a 50 pack and it was $4.99. And I was like, whoa, what a difference. Okay. Because they don't have a Hobby Lobby up by the cabin. They have a Walmart. So what I was doing was buying the Walmart 12 by 12 and cutting it down. But it was a smoother paper pack. This paper pack, and I'm finding this true with all their black labels. Okay. All the stuff with the black label. Not the stuff with the white label. 
It's rough. Okay? It's very rough. It absorbs ink. And it's much harder to see on this, even with a laser printer, than on the smooth ink. So, if you go to Hobby Lobby, and you are going to be printing on your paper, you want to find the white cardstock. You want to spend a little extra money and get the heavier cardstock, because the black labeled stuff is so thin that while this will work fine for uh, flips, inserts, that type of thing where you don't really need to print, it, it absorbs too much ink, I find. Okay? I even found that with the with the cheaper black stuff when I ran it through my laser printer. It, it absorbed in and I could not see what I had printed on, even with the laser printer. You really need the heavyweight stuff. Okay, guys. That's it for now. I know I seem to go on a lot about my cardstock, but I think it's a basic and people need, well, people, we really need to pay attention to it. You like my green mat? This is one of my Cricut mats. Now, you might know I got a new machine for Christmas, but this is my Cricut mat. I like my Cricut mats a lot. I wish that my uh, Scan and Cut had mats like the Cricut. Because these things last forever, it seems like. All right, green is for the the explanation type videos, I've decided. So, blue is for the how-tos or instructions. And, and uh, the greens will be for explanations. And the purple or lavender or gray, a uh, however you want to call it, that will be for my haul videos. Okay, guys, that's it for now. I will talk to you later. Hoping you're having a nice new year. Bye-bye.